right, everybody, welcome back to any cast today. The highly anticipated tier list of Taylor Swift albums is here, and I'm ready to rank them all. Uh, with the tortured poets department out, it's time. It's time to rank the 11 albums. I'm not doing our deluxe editions because I haven't listened to them, not the Taylor's versions because they have extra songs. I haven't listened to any of that. So the base core 11 studio albums starting with Taylor Swift all the way to the Tortured Poets Department. And I am excited to rank them because some of the rankings might actually surprise you with some of these. All right, first off, Taylor Swift, where she started out as a country singer, um, her very first debut self-titled album, some good stuff on there. I was a little harsh in my review. I think I still don't think it's necessarily great, but I do think it's... Uh, uh, better than what I put it at. And for that very reason, we will be putting it in C. Um, there is not a D tier here, there is just an F tier. And so some people really hate some of my rankings, but hey, it's my list. Um, I don't have much to say on it. Not many of my thoughts have changed uh, on this album in particular, but it's not as bad as some of the others that I uh, had harsher thoughts on. For instance, Fearless and Speak Now. Both of these, to me, are low balls for her. I'm going to put them both in the F tier, which is really going to make some people mad. And I will, of course, revisit these albums sometime, and maybe I'll have a different perspective on them, um, especially once I go to listen to uh, Fearless and Speak Now on their Taylor's versions. But I just wasn't a fan. Her first album did country best. Out of all of her albums, unless if we're counting folklore and, ever, and uh, evermore as country albums, which I guess evermore, yes, kind of, but it's a, it's a different type. They're of course superior to these three, but um, I just wasn't rocking with those two albums. Not not great for me. I know I think Speak Now got like a bunch of rewards. I believe somebody said that it got album of the year. And that's great and all, but I'm just not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it at all. Um, and I don't think it's going to change, you know? I think it's just going to kind of stay that way. Um, I, I I would love it to change, though. Taylor Swift's 1989 is an automatic S tier. And if you did not see that coming into this video, then I don't know where you were. Because 1989 is flawless, or it has very little flaws, if that. Um, just a, just an amazing, amazing, amazing album. Something that she, I don't know if she'll be able to replicate that for an album. Um, it, it's just perfect. Every single song, almost all the songs are hits. Even the ones that are lesser known are just amazing. There's no skips on the album. It all flows very well together. And it's not trying to tell some like super big story or anything. And it's just kind of like, hey, we're making a pop album. And let's just talk about little things that she wanted to talk about on her album, you know, and express. And it all meshes really well. A really well done, outstanding album from Taylor. Red. Red is one that I have actually changed my perspective on. And I will give it a beat here. I don't think people were thinking that I would do that. Uh, I If we were going week by week and I was updating this thing, uh, in the first week, it would have been, like, whenever we got to this, it would have been a C tier. But this album, I think I was a bit too harsh on it. Yes, it has some of those country um, vibes to it. Um, it's still pop at, at the same time. It's not country pop, but there's some that's like country, and then others is more pop. And it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not her greatest. It, there are flaws on the album, but she has quite a few songs on that album, actually, that are good, that I do appreciate. Um, and this was before her dramatic shift uh, to what is reputation. And truly, she has eras. Um, when I saw the eras tour, I didn't really understand why people were saying she had eras, um, but yeah, she's truly had errors over her music and been experimental with uh, her music. Um, and, and that's a great album. Um, 
even people that aren't Swifties, I think, would appreciate Red. Um, and hopefully 1989, but Red, maybe more so than 1989. I'm not really sure. Um, it, it's one that could appeal to all, which is something that is cool about that album. Um, because it has a little bit of country and pop. And I know country is a dying genre, but for you know adults, um, which I know I have an adult audience here on the channel somewhat. Um, and I don't know, the adults that I know and, and am surrounded by, um, or yeah, I guess are more receptive to country. Uh, so, you know, if I were to introduce them to Taylor Swift through her self-titled or Red, I think they would really vibe with uh, Red. Um, and it would be one that I would be willing to listen to with somebody. But of course, like if I was trying to introduce somebody to Taylor Swift, I'm putting on 1989. Reputation. Reputation has one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs. But my goodness, is it a travesty of an album? Because like I said, it's like she tried to be Joan Jett and just didn't quite make it it's going to be c tier but on the low side um and i was just oof, it, it's such a disappointment that that was what it was like why is there a song with ed sheeran future and taylor swift it does not make any sense ed sheeran and taylor yes future no not even close um the car that i or car I don't, the song that i really love on this album is of course getaway car and it's one of my favorites of hers uh entire discography but it just fell into an album that is not <laughs> i don't want to say not pleasant because it's not like it's painful to listen to or anything it's just not great if you guys don't know uh, if you guys want more in-depth on my so thoughts, I have the entire review. I'll be linking the entire playlist down below here on YouTube. Just go watch all the videos on YouTube. I have all of them. But at the end of the day, I it came down to she wasn't willing to commit, in my personal opinion, to a gritty rock, punk rock album. Um, and that really crippled this album and in fact one of the other albums that we that i listened to that i really love there is a song on there that kind of fits that album but would have been so much better for this album and i understand it was a big gap between these two but my goodness that, that this album was i don't even know not great okay lover 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 S tier. I know. That might make people mad. Lover is, in my opinion, and it's not really related at all to 1989, but it's like the sequel to 1989 because they're in the same line of pop. And both are tremendously amazing. Almost every single song on that album is amazing. There, I will admit, there are a few slow songs that depending on the day I don't want to listen to, but mostly no skips. Um, it also has some of the greatest feature, or one of the greatest features, which was me with Panic at the Disco. Um, phenomenal feature that I did not think was going to be like groundbreaking, but one of my favorite tracks. The entire thing is built for summer, and it is just amazing. Of course, Cool Summer is like the biggest song now from her, um, it's her biggest, well, I don't think it's like her biggest modern hit. I guess Antihero would be, but it has billions of streams. Um, and a lot of her songs do, but Cruel Summer's more popular amongst her billion stream songs, I believe. And it's used in a, like, a lot of stuff where people are like praising her content or, you know, like social media content where they're praising her or whatever and they're making like edit montages or whatever. It's, it's everywhere, you know, this song's everywhere, Cruel Summer. And this thing dropped in 2019 phenomenal year um for entertainment and for me personally and this added to it because i remember when this thing dropped and the promos were being run through target i don't know if she has a deal with target but they always promote her stuff she has to have like a really nice deal with target um because you know targets are so big but i remember they were promoting that 
crap out of this thing. And when this thing dropped, you could hear like almost every single song in the store because almost every single song, much like 1989, is a hit on this album. And for good reason, too. Folklore. Oh, man. Folklore. See, I really never wanted to see that one there. I really was gunning for it to be an amazing album, but no. No. Um, folklore. My goodness. Where to begin? The main thing that I had from this album was I felt like it was very hit or miss. One song would be good and the next not so great. Next one would be good. You might get two in a row. I think like the first three songs on this album, I was like, whoa, I really love it. And this has one of my favorite songs too, August. But the back half of that album, I don't know what happened to it. It just felt underdeveloped. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because she was doing two albums in one year. And the other, of course, being Evermore here. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Folklore, I know it's a fan favorite. And it's like one of the fans, biggest, the most, one of her most praised albums, I think, which is so crazy that I could say that about every single. But like I said, she has eras. And, you know, the world does have eras. And especially in like this digital age, where there's a lot of access to information and music and everything like that now you know artists have their eras and music has been evolving at a rapid rapid pace i believe uh, kind of and so you know whenever an artist like taylor swift will drop an album it's it's going to be a highly praised album no matter if it's well I, I take that back i don't think reputation was that highly praised i don't i don't know though I, I didn't look into it but this one was really highly praised and still is to this day it's a fan favorite for a lot of people a lot of people would put this in the s tier me personally, I'm not as big of a fan. So, it is what it is. Evermore. Evermore is our first A. Um, There's just something about the album itself. Or actually, no, sorry. I'm going to put it in B. Hi, B. It almost made it to A. There's just too many skips for me. But there's something about this album that is just superior, in my opinion, to Evermore. Or... To folklore, I'm getting them mixed up, but both were released in 2020 with like a six or seven month span in between them, which is impressive, like highly impressive in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, ever Evermore was there, and that's fantastic. Um, Evermore was great. It has this country, but also somewhat pop and very chill. Uh, no, not really pop, most so country in a very low and chill vibe to this entire thing and it's just very very nice and calming and relaxing it's something that i could put on and probably fall asleep to um which is a compliment you know that's great and her music you know it's it's very wide range of music as we'll see uh, folklore and evermore kind of had the same ish sound but i think evermore nailed it better as a conceptual album Midnight's is the return to pop Taylor and then Torture Poets as we'll get to in a little bit. But Midnight's. I wish I could put it in the S, but there's just a few songs that just don't really hit home, but it's on the verge of S tier. I almost put it in the S tier. It is almost flawless. The production on this thing is really what sells it. Yes, the lyrics and the songs, Lavender Haze is phenomenal. Um phenomenal song you have snow on the beach another phenomenal like i said in my review it's like lo-fi pop but not super lo-fi which is so hard to explain but there's a certain aesthetic that was aimed and you could see it in the music videos and uh, the few music videos that i have seen seen from that album and from the uh, music itself on the recording my goodness it's, it's just amazing um Lavender Haze is just amazing. Antihero is amazing. Karma is good. Not my favorite. There's a couple others that I'm blanking on. There's almost like no skips on this album. And something about the album is it just all flows very nicely. And it's well thought out and well put together. The Tortured Poets came out today as the, of uh, my recording. And I just finished my review. And it's really hard where to put this thing. Because some of the lyrics are just so deep 
and dark and twisted and sad and depressing. There's songs that I feel like I missed the meaning of. Others, I think there's a lot of imagery that like a diehard Swifty could easily debunk and tackle and break down. And I'm sure I'm going to be watching a lot of content breaking that, this entire album down. I'm sure I'll listen to it a few more times. The weird thing is, not a lot of these songs, like maybe four or five off the album, which I guess that's kind of decent, made it to my playlist. I guess that's decent. Um, yet, I really find it compelling because it's so bizarrely dark and melancholy. But it's really well produced and put together. And is she a poet? I'm going to have to listen to it again. It's a different approach to music from what she's put out. Um, but that's the exciting thing, I think, about listening to all her albums is you're always going to get something different. Um, but honestly, I, I felt like a light, like a seven. But just because of the mystery and intrigue, I would have probably put it in high B, but I think I'm going to put it in the A. Um, and the real reason being the lyrics themselves, some of them, I already watched a little bit of commentary on some of the stuff that was going on in these lyrics, where it's very intense storytelling in a way that I've never seen on an album, or I have, I've seen on a few albums, I would have, I would have to take a little bit to think about it, but it's interesting because it's like an anthology, which is the deluxe versions titled the Torture to Poets Department, the anthology, which adds an entire hour of content to this album. And people have been saying that makes the entire album better itself. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's good. It's good. Um, it's good. Um, I don't really know where to put it though. So I'm just going to leave it in A because of the mystery and the intrigue. But uh, realistically, it's more of a B tier for me right now. But I'll go back and listen to it. And I probably won't share my thoughts on it again. Maybe on any cast now, I probably will. Uh, and I'll, of course, share my thoughts on the entire journey. Uh, actually, I'll just talk about it here. But, you know, this experience has been fun. It was something that I was like, oh, I'm going to probably dread this. But I tried to look forward to it. And even though it took three albums to get to a good one, in my personal opinion, like the first three were not great. And then number four was 1989. I was like, yay. And then Red was there, and I was like, Ooh, oh, okay. And then Reputation was, like, interesting. But every single time I put a new one on, I was intrigued by it because I knew the impact of each of these albums, and, you know, the covers told a different story with some of them. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm interested to get to this one or this one or this one. And, like, Lover was highly, highly, highly anticipated for me. Um, same thing with Midnight's. Um, even though by the time... I think I had already, yeah, I'd already listened to Midnight's before, and I was like, uh, it's okay, and then I listened to it again, and I was like, no, this is actually really good, because I was in a better space to actually, like, focus on the music and everything, and take it in, um, yeah, this is, this has been a very fun journey to go through somebody's discography just to build up to their release, and we're going to do it again with somebody who has a more exclusive discography, um, Dua Lipa, which I honestly might do a tier list on her um albums even though she only has three when she releases this new one it'll be a third studio album um still she's had some phenomenal um albums but with that being said this journey has been fun i hope to do it with other artists so if this you know breaks the algorithm because i've seen some of my videos do so then great thank you for watching but also uh, consider putting down an artist that you'd like to see me explore. Put down your favorite artist. Uh, I love pop most, so just put on pop artist, and I'll look into the discography, and maybe I will, you know, build up to their new album release, or just do it for the fun of it, because album reviews have been very fun, and I think are going to become more of a staple of the podcast, and even maybe just this channel right here. Um... And it is interesting, you know, listening to all this and knowing all the artists that were inspired by Taylor Swift. Um, it's it's interesting, the uh, cultural impact that she's made throughout each and every single song. Uh, good or bad, the songs themselves. But with that being said, that is my tier list. Um, 
whether you like it or not. That's my tier list, and that's what I am putting for all of our albums. With that being said, peace out, everybody. See you next.